The first thing I do with any new airframe is to go over all of the joints with some CA. I didn't find any joints in this P47 that were loose, but hitting it with CA is just good insurance. The gas engines we use today can shake these things to death, so a little extra glue is not a bad thing. The instructions show you where all the servos go in the built-in servo tray. This is the throttle servo, and it's the only one that I wound up moving to make the linkage a little easier to make. Top flight marks the firewall for mounting most common engines. EME gives you the sticker that shows you that they were thinking the same thing. The standoffs that come with the EME 60 give me the exact firewall to prop washer distance that Top Flight wants. But there's a little interference back here with the choke arm. Plus, this carburetor is way too close to the firewall. I thought about spacing the motor out a quarter of an inch to give the carburetor some room, but then that starts messing with the CG. I eventually bored a big hole here to let the carburetor breathe and carve some reliefs to let the choke arm move freely. And we'll see that a little later. The elevators are hinged at the factory, and they did a good job on it. Seam is tight, and we get full movement easily. We do have to install the rudder hinges, but that's not a big deal. And Top Flight supplies robot style pin hinges, so it's easy to get the full throw out of it. The horizontal stabilizers are permanently mounted to the fuselage, and they have a pair of aluminum tubular spars inside. This hatch is installed at the factory, but covered over, and you do have to cut the covering to get it open. I think they meant this for electric models, but it works pretty good for gas, so I opened it up. I'm going to put a rotoflow tank in this plane, and the hatch gives me easy access to it. They also have places built in for the switch and fuel dots, so you can have all that under the cover, and none of it on the side of the fuselage. We're using a Robart electric tailwheel retract, and I thought this would be a good time to install that. The tailwheel is steered by a pull-pull cable system, and they have the tubes inside the fuselage for the cable, so this is really easy to install. My problem is that I'm trying to hold the fuselage up by myself while I feed all this stuff in, and it's like 5 o'clock in the morning. This whole process would have been a ton easier if I'd have had somebody to hold the plane or thought about leaning it up against something. The P-47 and this retract are built for each other, and the installation goes very easily. This turns out to be a very solid mounting system. You do have to pay attention to aligning this unit with the opening during installation. I did have to carve a couple little notches in the exposed wood to get the tailwheel to extend freely. I was proud of myself getting this tailwheel pull-pull system in so quickly. But there was a problem. I had snug the cables up with the wheel retracted, so when I tried to extend it, they turned into a little banjo in my tail boom. The tailwheel just won't extend that way, but I did find out if I turned the servo around and readjusted the cables, I could get it to work and has some decent tension on the cables, too. I decided to put the tailwheel steering servo on a separate channel from the rudder servo. Then I created a mix so we could adjust how much steering we have without affecting the rudder throw. A friend is going to help me cut the cowl for the motor because I suck at that. So I decided to go ahead and put the make-believe motor in because I suck at that just a little bit less. And yes, that's a lot of area for cooling air, because I don't goof around when it comes to cooling the motors. I was going to have to have the motor mounted to fit the cowl, so I went ahead and bored the hole in the firewall for that. Now that I have a bunch of raw wood directly behind the motor, I need to fuel proof that, and Balsarite works great for that. A couple of generous coats of Balsarite, and we're in business. I was absolutely shocked when I pulled the canopy out of the box and found out that it was all ready to install. I wasn't going to argue about that, so I whipped out my canopy glue and put that piece on. I did have to use a bunch of little pieces of masking tape to hold the edges of the canopy in place while the glue dried, but that was all I had to do. I think this is the easiest canopy I've ever installed. The vent covers on the sides were the same way. Just put some glue on them, tape them in place, come back the next day and take the tape off. You're done. The folks at Rotoflow also make this quick fire fuel filter and reservoir. Aside from filtering away better than any piece of screen is gonna, this holds a quarter ounce of fuel near the carburetor, so it makes starting a lot easier. 
The folks at Rotorflow don't make a whole bunch of stuff, but what they do make, they make right. And I don't fly anything without a Rotorflow tank in it anymore. And I think all those tanks are going to be joined by these quick fire filters also. This is after balancing the P47, and I found I needed to move the batteries forward, and I found this little bay ahead of the wing that made a nice place to put them. I had moved the throttle servo forward well before balancing, but you can see that the rest of this stuff is pretty well fixed. There's nothing here that can be moved for balance. And here you can see that I've got the throttle servo up front along with the filter and the tank. These are all set up and ready to go. Top Flight gives you this heavy aluminum hub for a reason. I had to put a strip of lead here and there's one more strip inside the lip of the cowl. That's a total of six ounces of lead I had to add to the plane to get it to balance right. For a giant scale warbird, that's not bad at all.